Welcome everybody. Does paying less or no taxes in retirement sound good to you? Well, in this video, we're actually going to be covering some really cool and simple tips on tax-free retirement. Things that your banker or Wall Street guy won't even tell you. Like for instance, how does your retirement income actually benefit, impacts your benefits on Social Security or even Medicare? Or how to create a tax-free retirement income altogether? And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Sharzad, one of our financial experts here. Thank you, Daniela, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharzad. I'm one of the co-founders of My Infinite Retirement. Today, I would be sharing seven strategies on tax-free retirement income. Please subscribe to our channel, click over the bell, and be notified of our upcoming videos. Let's get started. Seven tips for a tax-free retirement income. Tip number one, Roth IRA, individual retirement account. Why is it called Roth IRA? You pay taxes on the money going into your account. Contributions are not tax deductible since they are made with after-tax dollar. All future withdrawals are tax-free since you reach retirement age, including the gains. Now, both IRAs not to be mistaken by regular IRA, which is tax deferred. How much can you contribute to a Roth IRA? 6,000 a year for under 50 years olds, 7,000 a year for over 50 years olds. You have to have earned income, wages, 1099. If you earn too much money, you cannot contribute. For example, married filing jointly over 206,000 or single filing separately over 139,000. Know the rules. Five year rule. The account should be kept at least five years as well as 59 and a half year rule, you must be at least 59 and a half years old to withdraw without penalty. Tip number two, Roth 401k or Roth 403b. They are similar to Roth IRA. Your growth and withdrawals are tax-free, but let's take a look at the comparison between the two. In regards to Roth IRA, there is an income limit to participate. Once you meet that requirement, you can contribute 6,000 per year with additional of 1,000 if you're over 50 years of age. The problem with these accounts is that most people will need to save more than 6000 per year in order to reach their financial goals, and sadly, they cannot. Now, for Roth 401k and 403b, there is no income limitation, and the contribution is up to 19500 per year, and 6000 catch-up if you are 50 years of age or older. Be mindful of distribution rule. Roth 401k and 403b has mandatory withdrawals no later than age 72. Roth IRA has no requirement while owner is alive. Roth 401k not to be mistaken by regular 401k which is tax deferred. You can check out our later videos on the Roth accounts which goes more into detail. Tip number three, municipal bonds and funds or monies for short. They can be a short term or a long term bond. The two most common types of municipal bonds are general obligation bonds, revenue bonds. The income distribution from these bonds bonds are not subject to federal income taxes, but they may still be subject to state income taxes. You'll get a return of maybe 1% from a tax exempt portfolio. The interest rates these bonds pay is generally lower than that of taxable bonds, which could have various investments and reinvestment risks. As with any investment, municipal bonds entails risks as well, such as call risk, credit risk, interest rate risk, inflation risk, liquidity risk. You can always leave us a comment if you're interested to know more Tip number four, health saving account or HSA. HSAs are like personal saving accounts, but the money in them is used to pay for healthcare expenses. You can get a tax deduction for contribution and the growth. The drawback is you can only contribute 3,500 a year for individuals and about 7,000 a year for family coverage. And also the deductible is high with these types of plans. Why were health saving accounts created? To help control healthcare costs. The idea is that people will spend more wisely if they are using their own money. Who can set up a health saving account? Your employer may offer an HSA option or you can start your own through a bank or other financial institution. To qualify, you must be under age 65 and carry a high deductible health insurance plan. Can I withdraw money from a health saving account for non-medical expenses? If you withdraw funds for non-medical expenses before you turn 65, you have to pay income taxes on the money and an additional 20% penalty. What are the disadvantages to health 
saving accounts. Illness can be unpredictable, making it hard to accurately budget for healthcare expenses. Some people find it challenging to set aside money to put into their HSAs. Pressure to save the money in your HSAs might lead you to not see medical care when you need it. Tip number five, beware of timing. How is Maggie related to Irma? If you are approaching retirement, you could still be aware of your timing. If your modified adjusted gross income or Maggie is above a certain amount, you may pay an income related monthly adjustable amount or Irma, which will result in raise in your medical premium. What is the effect of Irma on Medicare Part B and D of your premium? Part B covers doctor's visit and D covers prescription drugs. It can raise your premium all depends on your modified adjusted gross income from two years ago, which we will cover in next slide. So remember, Irma is the income related monthly adjustable amount and Maggie is modified adjustable income. So how is your 2018 Maggie affecting your Part B premium in 2020? For example, pick a number. If you make 136,000 a year, you would have to pay 376 each month for your Part B premium. Of course, the numbers are different for married couples and so on. You can find most recent information on medicare.gov. Let's take a look at how 2018 Maggie will affect your Medicare Part D premium in 2020. Let's pick the same numbers. You make 136,000 a year, you would have to pay $50.70 a month in addition to your Part D premium. By the way, once you're on Medicare, Part D is mandatory to have and there is a penalty if you don't get one. You can watch our videos on Medicare to get more clarity on this. Tip number six, social security benefit and income taxes. How to avoid taxes on social security? Many retirees are surprised to find that they have to pay taxes up to 85% of their social security benefits. Retirees who have income from another source in addition to social security frequently have to pay tax on their social security benefit. For example, if you're single and make over 35,000 a year, your social security will be taxed up to 85%. If you marry and make over 44,000 a year, again, your social security will be taxed up to 85%. Tip number seven, cash value life insurance. I call this one rich people's rock. Most people don't think of life insurance as part of their retirement plan. However, this can be a wonderful tool to bridge the gap to financial freedom. If you're married, have kids, have maxed out contribution on your other retirement accounts or are in the high tax bracket, it can come really handy. Let's take a look at three income tax advantages of life insurance. One, the death benefit is generally paid out tax-free. That's pretty straightforward advantage for your beneficiaries. Two, the cash value accumulates on a tax-free basis. In other words, your money will grow tax-free in your account. Three, you can access the cash value of the policy on a tax-free basis. Money borrowed or taken from the cash value of a life insurance policy is not subject to taxes. Essentially, you can set up this account like a Roth IRA without income on or contribution limits. Also, these accounts won't cause IRS penalty for withdrawals before you reach 59 and a half. This can be a huge bonus for people looking to retire early. Please check out our later videos on life insurance to find out more. Let's do a recap. We learned about Roth IRA and its rules, Roth 401k or Roth 403b and its rules, municipal bonds and funds, HSA or health saving account, what it means to be aware of timing, how to avoid taxes on social security income, tax-free cash value life insurance and its benefits. We were able to cover a lot of information on tax-free retirement income. I hope they were beneficial to you. Back to you, Daniela. Okay, that was great. Thank you, Sharzad. And I hope you all have a better understanding now on the many tips and options that you have for tax-free retirement. And so please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we upload new videos every week. And also make sure to share this with your friends and family. And lastly, if you like what you saw here today, click the link below to become our client so we can help you further and educate you on how you can create your own personal tax-free infinite retirement plan. And always remember, knowledge, knowledge is power, power, especially when it comes to your finances. We'll see you next time.